Hello everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. How are we all doing today? Um, I'm going to fiddle with my seat here, maybe, perhaps. I always forget which side my like seat thing is on. Okay. There we go. Better. <laughs> How is everyone doing today? So today we are talking with Nancy Antonucci. Um, I'm super excited about this, um, and we are going to talk about her book, Tarot Rituals. Woo. Can you tell? Uh, look, I've been busy. I have been busy in this book. There's so much awesome information in there. <clears throat> so we are just waiting a moment for Nancy to hop on, and then uh, we'll get going. <clears throat> And hopefully, I have my little heater on next to me, and I have my blanket on because I'm freezing. Like, super cold. I know everybody's weather has been kind of crazy, so. I'm just, I'm right there with it. What are we at here? Yeah. We're, we're at 14, so it's actually pretty warm out right now. And I'm going to go ahead and... Make sure we are on here. There we go. All right. Hello, hello. Get you on. Come on. There we go. Hi, honey. Hi. How are Not you? Good. I'm just going to... I'm going to move this around a little bit. Yeah, you do your thing. All right. And okay, maybe if I stand back here, I will look like I'm in a lineup. <laughs> That's what I do the first like five minutes. I'm just sitting there moving it around like, okay, <laughs> which way am I right now? <laughs> this is this is the weirdest thing about this book is technology has changed so much since my last one came out that it's like a uh, let me just move this up a little bit so you can see my beautiful goddess in the back. Isn't Ooh, she cool? Yeah, she is. I love that. All right. So this is good. This is good. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. All, All right. right. Let me just go ahead and introduce you real quick, and then we'll get to chatting. So hi, everyone. This is Jen from The Cardamancer, and today we have Nancy Antonucci, or Nooch, if you know her around these parts. So we yep. are going to be chatting around about um, her new book, Tarot Rituals. And you can tell I've been busy. Look at that. <laughs> yes, I've been busy. So we are going to talk. This is her new book that just came out. So we're going to talk about that and just all things Nooch. That's what's happening today. I'm That's so what? excited. Yes, 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 yes. So before we even dive into any of the book stuff, I want to know how you even got started in tarot. Like, let's go right to the beginning. Okay. Uh, my, I, I grew up in a real small town in Pennsylvania and it was a, a Catholic setting, but my mom and I were really into anything alternative. Like we got books on phrenology, which are head bumps and astrology and you name it. We were into it. Oh, I love it. And, and tarot wasn't really back then. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't that pop. There were only, there weren't even actually any major books in the United States when I was, you know, but she did get a writer weight deck you know, for me. And so I bought it to a show and tell in grade school oh my and, God, okay. um, and it worked right away. And so that's how I started. I, but I didn't use them for, I mean, mom said, if these work, I'm going to take them, oh. you know, so my mom's weird. So you know, <laughs> I love her, but she's, yeah. So, but I'm glad, I, in a way I'm glad she took them because yeah. like at the time I, that, it didn't scare me. I just didn't quite understand what I was getting into. And then, then I didn't pick them up again until my early 20s. Oh, okay. And what made you pick them up again? Um, depression. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a solid answer. <laughs> yeah, the first thing comes to mind. It was a real rough time in my life. I called my early 20s my medieval ages, you know, right. and uh, I was at a I, I befriended this wonderful uh, person uh, where I was waitressing. I was in a dance company and waitressing. And so 
I went home with him and he laid out some tarot cards and I thought, wow, I haven't even thought of these since, you know, grade school because I was going to be a famous dancer, right? Yeah. So I put all, all those toys away. Right. No, we don't need and, that uh, distraction. Yeah, really. And and he laid them out and I and I just was like, the, these images just like jumped off the floor at me. And then he did the most peculiar thing. He took a book and started reading the definitions for them and I just went, no, 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 just let me, just let them talk, right. you know, so, oh, and we were in like thieves after that. Yeah, I bet. Wow, that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> so did you, you know, start just kind of reading for yourself and then reading for other people, kind of like the natural progression of things? Or did you like just kind of jump right into it and you were like in it? You know, I... <sighs> I, th I think it was both. I mean, I would read for people just to see mm -hmm. what the cards would say. Right. You know, how, how they talked. I didn't get a little white book either for some reason in my deck. So I honestly didn't know that there were specific definitions. So I thought you were supposed to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was interesting. It was a Morgan Greer. And for some reason, all I can think of is some factory person did not put that book in that deck and it changed someone's entire destiny. Really? You like, re think about that. How crazy, like, and it probably every other deck made that day had a book in it, except for yours. Except for mine. Wow. So I, just thought you were, I thought you were supposed to go through every card and just kind of let it talk to you. And some, mm -hmm. some of the cards really did. And some of them really didn't. I mean, right. there were some cards I didn't really know how to listen to for years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And and that's just, that's so different too than how usually it kind of goes along because most people, they, excuse me, they get the book and then they just go by that and they don't even pay attention to like what the pictures are, like what they're saying to right. them. So you really kind of got like a whole different type of training on the cards, but, like unbeknownst yeah, that, to you. That's, yeah, what an initiation, huh? You know, and, and in the psychic, my first book, Psychic Tarot, I actually, if if I could modify anything from that book, I would say, you know, no, go ahead and read traditional meanings and stuff. I, in my book, I was real adamant and just said, don't touch any traditional meanings for a year and a day. You know, and it's kind of like, <laughs> you can do both, right. you know, but. But you really kind of need to do both. You know, like, yeah. I, I really do think your own creative authority, the more you develop it, the stronger it gets, you know, mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, knowing the base meanings of the book itself, I think that also kind of helps your intuition a little bit, too, because oh. a lot of times you do look at the card without knowing what it is, and there is some sort of familiar thread there, so... It kind of gives you that little like boost, like, oh, okay, I'm on the right page, you know? <laughs> it's definitely, I, I agree. I definitely do encourage people to do both. Um, so mm -hmm. when, you know, when somebody is first learning to read and, you know, nowadays it is so different because you have yeah. the internet, you could go to the bookstore. And right. I mean, even when I started, there was no internet and I could go to the library and there was like three books. And you can, it took so long to get them because it, people are always checking them out. So okay, then <laughs> you look all of like 30. So that's really shocking, shocking, shocking to hear. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go with that. We're staying there. Right. <laughs> I act like Tarot makes us young. Yeah. It's my, I always say it's the glamour <laughs> magic. I'm really good at glamour magic. That's what it is. <laughs> My oldest is actually 26, but I did start very young. So that's as, okay. much as, we're, that's as far as we're going with that. But, <laughs> <laughs> so it was so hard to like find out and, you know, you just didn't know people, you know? So right, right. how did you finally come, like find other people that did tarot with you besides that one friend that you just happened to run into? Well, I, I moved to Minnesota and, um, uh, so I wanted to learn, okay, now I'm going to learn tarot. See, I didn't even really think that I, you know, what I was doing was, was, you know, I knew it worked, but it was like, well, since I did it, you know, like when you look at shoes and I'm like, I really want that pair of shoes, but when they're your shoes, then you buy them. It's like, 
you know yeah, it, yeah. It, it's the me syndrome it's like oh well they're now they're mine so yeah that, you that's know not so shiny and great right or it looks better <laughs> on the other person you're like that's not how they look on me even though they probably yeah do. that's right that <laughs> So I went, looked at a couple of new age stores here that it was hot in Minneapolis. There were some really good readers here and stuff, but they were teaching traditional. And I was like, I actually really don't want to do that. I kind of like what I was doing. So I started teaching at this adult education thing called the Open U. And I would only have like four or five students, but I did that for like, oh, got about three or four years. And that is actually how my whole that's how I got clients it, it built everything for me was to teach oh, yeah. but I was only two steps ahead of any student you know and I let them know that too it's like I'm, I, you know we're just going to play in this sandbox yeah yeah no I love that too and you know as a teacher that's also a great way to go about it because it, it you know tarot is intimidating when you first start it and so many yeah. people you know, pick it up or come across the teacher that tell, you know, is just not very, you know, open. And then they just put it down in the drawer and off it goes. And that was, you know, that's the end of that. Right. You know, I mean, I, I, I know just, I hear about that happening even now. And even now it's harder because you have all these other things and these people saying, don't do this, do this, don't do that. And that's so, right. that's so hard. What advice would you have for again these like newer readers even seasoned readers or people who only been reading a couple of years like where you know besides your books obviously and they can look at you know look you up too um what is like a good resource for them like what how do you know what to believe and what not to believe what well, you know it kind of depends on the learner you are you know mm -hmm. like uh, honestly my husband he, you know, no matter how fabulous and creative and innovative I was, it still wasn't making sense to him until he got Rachel Pollock's 78 Degrees of Wisdom. Okay. So that's, that, that really hit me. It was like, wait a minute. We all learn. We all take in information in a different way. You right. know, so you, you need to find – it doesn't matter what front door you go in. Just go in any front door and then walk around the house and see, you know – okay, I can learn a little bit about this. I can learn. I would say though, I, you know, maybe for brand new readers, I would say, could you give yourself at least six months before you read for anyone else? <laughs> yes. yes. You know, just at least, at least. <laughs> I know. You know, it, just because it's like, then you have your own language with it. And then mm -hmm. you, you can, it's your relationship with, Really, to me, it's a relationship with the divine. It's just that the, those 78 cards are just such a, those imagery, the images are, are portals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, was, I was thinking about talking to you today, and I just thought, okay, what do I really want to say? I'm just learning how to talk about all this. This is, I mean, about the book. I've right. never, a lot of this stuff in the book, I've not taught. You know, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm just going to do the processes that help me. Right. Some of the things I've done, in, like the group stuff, I've done all the group things. So I know they work, you know, right. but um, I was thinking to myself, you know, tarot gives us p total permission to be fully human. Right. Fully human. So don't go to tarot to be the wise, pure white one. Don't, don't yeah. you know, we, we're the Buddha and the asshole, exactly. you know, and it's like, how do you? <laughs> That's what it's about. So it's how do you figure out, you know, and then I thought to myself, more than that, I think tarot not only teaches us how to be great, a great human, it's like a blueprint in being human, mm -hmm. but it's also, a, it's a blueprint in being a magical human, you know, and what, what kind of, what potential we have, you know, the old thing, like we only use an eighth of our brain, you know, right. and it's like, well, okay, then let's use the rest of it because boy, the world needs it. Yeah, they, yeah, that's definitely a fact. <laughs> we <Yeah>. definitely do. <laughs> like, I, mean, come I, on, guys. I tell total muggles, listen, I don't care if you think you're a witch or not. Just witch the fuck up right now. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> all of it, just like, bring it up. Right. Bring that love up. Wait, bring it up. If you need a hat, a broom, if you need a cat, whatever you need, let's get going on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, do whatever you need to do because we just pretend. Pretend right. you're wonderfully divine and then, then exactly. spread that love like crazy. 
Yes, yes, absolutely. You know, and it is so true, too, because, you know, I think that's also a part of tarot people are afraid of. And just as being a reader, you know, um, for many years, like, people come to you, and they're just like, don't tell don't tell me when I'm gonna die. You know, that was I, I've been asked that so many times. And I'm like, do I look like that? Do I have like the hood <laughs> on and the black cape? Like, I'm not, I'm not that person. I don't want that responsibility. But am I telling you that maybe you're being a complete jerk and you need to start making better decisions? Yeah, I'll probably do that. <laughs> totally. And, uh, you know, when I was a much naive, a younger naive reader, you know, I, it wasn't like I was adamant that I would read for you at all. In fact, don't ask me where this healthy boundary came from, but you know, the boundary was, if you didn't ask me for a reading, I'm not giving you one. Right. I needed that permission. So I would never ever say, hey, how about if I do a reading for you? I just never did that, you right. know? And thank God that saved a lot of turmoil. Oh my that God. Decision. But I remembered at this party, this woman wanted her boyfriend to get a reading and he was like, uh, 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 almost disdainful, like and and hostile, and I'm like, no, oh, no, oh, he doesn't yes. want, he doesn't need a reading, you know. And then I find out through someone else that he was having an affair, and he was ah, really. And he, told, yeah. he told her he was worried that I would blow that. Right. And I was like, oh my god, is like, I, I, should I perhaps give myself as much power as everyone else's? Yeah. <laughs> Yes and like, yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, uh huh, yeah. No, it <laughs> is. Like, people do really, really, really worry about that. And, and I don't love doing readings with like couples or anything like that because I feel mm -hmm. like there's always, you know, you want to have a healthy relationship and communication and all that. But there are some things that maybe you don't share or thoughts that you have. And sometimes, you know, if that's right in the front of your head as I'm giving you a reading, it's probably going to come up. <laughs> right. You know, and it's like, yeah, so I, that's definitely something I don't love to do for sure. But, um, I, you know, I don't mind, I don't mind couple reading, but I need more time. If, if I'm going to do yeah. a couple reading, I say no, an hour and a half that I can't do that in an hour. Right. No, yeah. it's at the no, need, of time. Yeah, you need a lot of cushion time. Like, mm -hmm. is everybody okay? Let's just make a couple yeah. of jokes. Right. Let's dive in again. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, just like, let's cushion it and make it all nice and poofy. And here we go. Yeah. Definitely. And everyone's safe. Yeah, yeah, everybody's good. So how did you um, come about um, writing Psychic Tarot? How did that happen? Oh, that is 30 years of teaching. So like I knew how that book was going to land because I, I did, I practiced it. I knew those were things I taught for 30 years. And I was teaching at a, a spiritual, a women's spiritual conference in Mankato, Minnesota, really one of the funnest conferences, just like, just women going wild that weekend. And it was, just, <laughs> it was kind of fun, you know, yeah, goofy that's awesome. women going wild. You can't get better than goofy women go, going wild. Right. Yes. And uh, I would do a major arcana every year. And one of the things I did, it, boy, I'm telling you, this was like a highlight of tarot for me was I did the fool. And I, I just lined everyone up and I just said, okay, now I want everyone to close your eyes because we're going to do the full chant, you know, oh, and just yes. repeat after me. And so what I said was, I have no idea what I'm doing, you know, <laughs> and they all said that as a group. And I was, I almost peed my pants. I no, was that like, is so oh. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I can we redo that somehow? Like I want to totally. be there for that. Totally. Yes. And, like, and, and especially when you have a group of people, it's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And I went, I think I've entered the church of tarot. And if I didn't, I'm going to create one. <laughs> yes. I will be there. I'm, I'm so prepared up for that. Absolutely. <laughs> That's fun. But, That's but from that, I wrote like a, a just a little teeny manuscript. And then, um, you know, I, Llewellyn, you know, people from Llewellyn came up and said, listen, hey, this would be a pretty good book. And I just said, oh, you're crazy. I don't know how I'm not going to write, you know, and they and then 
And then she said, well, what about a ghostwriter? And I thought, that's hilarious. You know, psychic <laughs> tarot music and ghostwriter. So I did. I got a friend of mine was also my student, and she was a professional writer. So we worked together, and it was, oof, that was not an easy process because I'm very bossy, and I can be very opinionated. I'm an Aries. I like my tongue. My tongue's a hammer sometimes, and and I still feel bad about that, but Melanie has forgiven me. <laughs> so, um, but then after that book, I started writing seasonal emailers, so the turning points. And I always gave a tarot idea and a non-tarot idea. Oh, and I did that for like six, seven years regularly, wow. never missed a season. And I actually think that's what made me more confident in my writing skills. Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially that you're doing it every, you know, every, three months, every three months. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's like, that's good practice for sure. It's oh, God, it is. And meeting a deadline, you know, it just like, yeah. uh oh, right now I'm a little nervous because February 1st, it's in bulk. And I'm like, oh, God, I have so many things before in bulk right now. And it's right. like, see, it's, it's like, see, I just transformed all that Catholic guilt into into pagan discipline <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> see i mean it does it's hard to shake off it really is it definitely yeah don't is. shake it off use it yeah like yeah, turn it yeah. back on you you can yeah flip it around no and i was i actually was looking at the calendar today too and i was like oh wow mbok is is right i thought i had like another week and i did i was like oh I guess I have to like get myself organized for this. Okay. And it came up like really fast. Like I feel like it January did. was like a million years long, but like a second long. Like it was weird. either that or December was oddly slow. And right. so that that's what threw us off because you're right. January just like I can't believe we're at the end of the month already. This is crazy. It is crazy. It just went. And that's why, like you said, I was like looking at the calendar. I'm like, oh, okay. I have another. No, I don't have another week. Okay. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing later. Getting myself organized for that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, for sure. So let us talk about your new book here. And it's, it's yeah. and here it's 222, two, two, by the way. I just looked at the clock and that's what it said. So two, two yeah. numbers. I'm a numbers person. Um, so let me move. I gotta move my key. Mine's 11 11. I, 11. Either See, 11 11 go. or 1 11. I get those two all the time. Yes. It's like, what, the, what is, you know, I think, you know what I think those number things are? I feel like as a collective beehive, I just feel like those are the moments where all of us are like just sink, sinking for like a couple right. seconds. Yeah. Oh, and I then, love that. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Right. Like we're all just like, here we are. And then off we go again. Like yeah. it's that moment. Right. Oh, I love that. So now what was your inspiration to write tarot rituals? Because I know you said that you didn't, you, you haven't really taught any of this stuff, you know, it, besides participating. So much of it. Yeah. Stuff. But I was bitching to my friend, Barbara Moore. She's a really good friend of mine. She's an oh, editor at, at yeah, Well. Yeah, she's super at, sweet. Uh, and I was yeah, just I bitching. Her. I just said, holy Christ, where are the magicians in this world? Where are the where's the love? Like, wh how can we, how can we raise a level of this? You know, is there a way we could use tarot? And she goes, you know, I think there might be a book in that. And right. I just had that sinking gut feeling that, oh God, it was, she was right. You know, it was just like, it was like you hear the calling, but it's not, whoa, it's more right. like, mm. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna. You are going to do this. Like you know? parking your. It's like parking itself in your gut. Like, huh? Here I am. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, that's. Yeah, cool. that's where it really. I was inspired by her to. And, and I, I, I didn't realize. I almost had a parallel life to the psychic tarot, which is the teacher and the public and going to conferences and do de do and all, you know just being in public, right? Right. This rituals thing was happening alongside that, but it was all, it was mostly private. Right, right. Yeah. So I had boxes and boxes of stuff that I wrote, unfortunately, not well. Like, you know, it's like half those notes were like dream notes, you know, which yes. drive you nuts. It's like, Jesus Christ, I can't even read this. What I the hell did I say? 
what was I doing? You I know, know so I know. I do that all the time too. Or like you start something and then you kind of leave it and then you go back to it and you're just like, I don't know what happened here. Who yeah. asked me? And I don't know what. They're <laughs> <laughs> so I had to decipher the Rosetta Stone, and then after I got through that, you know, I knew, you know, the the shortly after then the table of contents just kind of fell into place I love and to me that's the spine you know it's like mm -hmm. once I have a table of contents I can I can do it oh yeah absolutely because so. that's your map right there I mean that's definitely yeah. the way to go um yeah. so you know uh, one phrase stuck out at me and, and it was kind of right at the beginning of the book and I'd like to talk about that a little bit is you said the power of pretend and I just loved that so can you talk about that a little bit? Well, again, when I was, uh, I have a cat that's Nazi. Oh. Leave me alone. <laughs> um, he's a. She wants to say hello. Mr. The Buddy. Oh, oh my goodness. He's beautiful. Yeah, and he has a brother that's, that's short furred, you know, the oh. two black cats. Yes. Oh those eyes oh my you know God. what i have a great story about the queen of wands i gotta tell you this tell me yes because you know what? that's my favorite know. card too by the way oh <laughs> you are gonna love this story okay yes, so when, when pixie was living in a house with theater people mm -hmm. and the queen of wands was one of the actresses but that the queen had a little black cat that just insisted on sitting next to her so she just painted it in. And now people feel like the black cat with the queen of wands has been there since the Renaissance time. And it's like, <laughs> no, it was some little dick of a cat that wasn't going to leave. <laughs> right, right. Like the cats are there waiting. Like, I, I need something right now. And why are you all just sitting there not moving? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, sometimes then the layer of the queen of wands for me is... Just because it's historic, if you think it's historical, that doesn't actually make it right. Right. You know, or, or what we, what was just a very realistic thing was blown up into a myth, you know, and it doesn't have to start at the beginning of time to be holy. Right, right. Or just like overanalyzing it. Like you said, it's just this little jerk cat that's hanging around and got in the picture. It doesn't mean that there's this some huge meaning around it either, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my God. Well, the, the power of pretend when, again, in my early days of teaching, I was doing this visualization and, you know, I just felt like, wow, just like I smacked that out of the ballpark. You know, I was just, you know, Aries ego. We, to Aries ego, you know, people say ego like it's a bad thing. That's, that's a lot of Aries. I'm an Aries like. rising. So yes to all. <laughs> That's right. I think Huckleberry Finn was an Aries, you know, because he, he can kind of talk everybody in. Hey, you yes. want to paint this fence with me, don't you? you right, know, right. it's, it's, That's an Aries, you know. Okay. Uh, but someone came up to me after class, right? And I thought she was going to compliment me. And she just said, so basically, you're just making all this up. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. you're right. You're right. I am making this all up. You know, I said, but but if we're spirits having a human experience, isn't this all made up? Right. This is all made up. You and I being two different people, we're pretending that, you know, because yeah. our energy is, we're all one. Right. You know, right. And, like all of it. Yeah, definitely. That's probably so not you, the answer she expected either. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> like, wow, that made you really happy. <laughs> I was like, a, you just gave me a corner piece of a jigsaw puzzle, you know? Exactly. <laughs> You're right. I mean, our brains actually think very literally like that. That's why in the book I say, you know, it's like theater. You're sitting there, the lights go off, the curtain opens. Right away, we're all going into pretend land, you yeah. know, like our, our brain is now saying we are going to be in a world now where all these things will happen. And I think true magic is that your perceptions change. That's the thing. It's like what I think all the rituals, I try to get that tone across of what are you shifting into? How can you connect to whatever source is to you? Is it your inner wisdom? Is it the collective wisdom? Is it, is it Athena? Who, right. Figure it out. 
figure it out. Yeah. And, yeah. and then you're going to be able to play radio signals. You know, then you're going to be able to pretend is the first door, mm-hmm. you know, and then there's a whole hallway after that, that, it, you know, it's different for all of us. Right. Right. And I, and I do love that too, that you included that because it's almost like, yeah, you can pretend like it's okay. Like, it's fine. Like, you know what, that helps, like you said, open the door to other things. Because I think people, you know, if it's weird, because like, you see stuff online and all that, and these people are going all woo woo all over the place. But, but really, they don't, they don't practice any of it. They just do it for show. And then you have people who really do Mm -hmm. want to get into it, but feel like they can't compete with that. And then kind of back away from it. So it's like this weird, you know, push and pull of it. And, you know, and, and that's why I think that stuck out to me so much, too, is that you're like, yeah, it is the power of pretend. And that's totally fine. Like, don't worry about it. Just keep going. <laughs> I, You know, and I, I tell clients all the time, I have everything in my life I got by pretending. Right. Because I was a poor dancer. Did I ever think I'd ever be able to own a house? Did I ever think I was going to have a kid? No, I didn't. None of that seemed possible to me. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just, well, if I can pretend, you know, if we can pretend, I think what it does is just tells your brain to shut up too. Like if you're saying, okay, I'm just going to pretend now your brain's like, I'm leaving. You know, (laughs) like peace out. Bye. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Totally. No, it's so true. Well, and I think too, it also, you know, kids learn through play. So why does that have to stop when you become an adult? You know? Right. Because society, you know, we're conditioned to not do that anymore. And and I think that's a part of even doing magic and all of that is going back to that. And that back to that, you know, just being so open. Like you said, magic is your perception, being able to change and not just being set. So it just makes so much sense, you know, too, for sure. So especially when you want to bring it in and start doing rituals to just kind of deepen all of that. Um, So what was like the first, what was the first ritual that you ever did? Uh, With with tarot or without? Um, Either or. Like, what was the first one that you really like, that was like, you were like, I'm doing this with ritual. This is what it is. Um, I snuck into, I lived right next to the church. So I snuck into the confessional and I got some neighborhood kids. So I played priest and then I got some neighborhood kids to come and tell me their sins. (laughs) You are an Aries, aren't you? (laughs) That was wonderful. And and there was one, one of my neighbors was such a sweet child, you know, and she said, but I, I didn't do anything. And I said, make something up. (laughs) <laughs> make it good make it juicy <laughs> oh my god yes that's amazing oh my gosh wow i think i always was i, I never understood why only you know priests you know why are the nuns the, the wives of jesus i just it, it just none of that it was like there were always things that just did not mix they didn't fit for me right you know, honestly, I feel the same way about a lot of pagan stuff. Too. Or, you know, honestly, I was okay. I was part of this druid circle for a while, right? And we had a very concise script, and everyone had their rules and everything. And I just thought, oh my god, but I don't feel the spirit at all. Where is the where Where is the spirit of this? Not that you can't use really tight scripts. But you, it's all about, you know, are you fully present? Are you really calling in love? Are you grounded and working from love? You know, because when you aren't, it's boring as shit. Right. Pretty much. Right. And I it told is. You're the, just going through the motions. I told the priest the only difference between the Druid priest, I said, the only difference between this and the Catholic Church is that I'm not falling asleep in a pew. <laughs> there's there's yes. no pew to fall asleep in. Right, That's the right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is true. And I think, you know, there, and I think that's a good point too, that even though you're doing these rituals, that you can structure them the way you want to, and they don't, you know, they don't need to be like that super strict, you know, no. way, because it is, that's, I feel like that I, for me, 
you know, when when you start getting into that, it just loses all the magic. It's like you just like stripped it yeah. all the way and then you are just moving through the motions. And it's so it's just like it's not fun anymore, you know. And to me, a highlight of pretty much any ritual I do is that part where I finally opened the directions, recognize that I'm part of the source for me. That's that's my you know, earth, right? you know, and, and then I finally am in the center and then I'm going to listen. Mm -hmm. So it's that quiet part of the ritual. It's, it's the download to me is, mm -hmm. is the highlight really of any ritual I'm going for that. Mm -hmm. It's like, not that I need answers, but so, sometimes I need to be blessed. Sometimes I need to be, uh, like for instance, you know, when, okay, this might get a little political, but uh, everything's political. <laughs> <laughs> when Trump, uh, when the refugee families were being separated, I swear to God, I felt like something was going to break in my head. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that they were doing that on my money. Right. You know, it was like they were doing that in our name, you know, and I just thought, uh, okay, I'm, I now hate like I haven't hated in a long time, mm -hmm. you know? And so I did a ritual because it was like, I know hate only compounds hate. Right. That is not going to be effective. Bottom line, is it effective? You know? And I went into that ritual and I said, somebody better come in here and help me because I'm losing my mind now, you know? And Athena or my image of Athena walked in and she said, um, I'm the professional. Why don't you hand that over to me every day? Yeah. Every wow. day you tell me that you need this, you know, and I do, and I still do it. I still do it because they haven't, they haven't bought all the families together yet. Right. Right. Yeah. And I still do that. I just like Athena, I want fierce justice, right. fierce. I yeah. want, I want people to know this was wrong and you know, sorry, I didn't mean to get on that soapbox. No, but, you're fine. No, we're talking again, about that, Athena too. It's all related, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But ritual, if it's not helping your everyday life, too. I mean, it's like you don't want to just add ritual because, although it is fun to do, mm -hmm. but right. ritual is a connection to the source. It's a dialogue with source, whether you do it with other people or by yourself. And right. to me, the, the tarot is like the telephone. It's like, yes. here's the question. You said what? Oh, oh got the, you know, like, and then the, the tarot just is the telephone. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Amber had a question. Let me see what her question is. Oh, good. Because I can't read any of these. Yeah, no, that's totally fine. Um, I'm going to do said, a real old woman like. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got okay. you. Don't worry. Thanks. Um, you being all 30 and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> she said, can you speak to your motivation of presenting tarot use for group ritual? Now, what was the first part of that question? Can I, ex what yeah, was that I'll again? Read it again? Can you okay. speak to your motivation of presenting tarot use for group ritual? Uh, it could be because then you, you, uh, well, there's an African saying, if you want to go somewhere alone, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go farther, go with others. I love that. So there are places as a group that we can go that are just a single it cannot go. And, and there's also a, a, you know, like Buddhist chanting. I mean, they often, yeah. they tell, and even yoga. It's like the more people that are doing yoga together, the, the, the greater level of healing that can happen, not just for the group that's doing it, right. but for how they send it out into the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's to empower. I think it's, my question would be just to kind of like raise our level of, of power. Right, right. Yeah, definitely. I love that. So um, for people that are just, um, you know, they just got your book, they're just getting into rituals, they've never done rituals before. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what advice do you have for them, like to get started? Um, to start seeing yourself as an energetic being and play with energy. Mm -hmm. So a ritual when I'm brushing my teeth is like, I'm going to let go of anything nasty I said about myself or someone else. Spit. Oh, yeah. That's Spit. Good. You know, like everything is energy. And uh, 
every morning I go to a window where the, the sun comes up, if it comes up, right? you know, and, and just cross my hands over my heart and just, I have a thing that I say every morning, which is, um, it is a joy and honor to be human and spirit led by my divine allies and beloved ancestors. Uh, it just, yeah, they don't want me to say the rest. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, we got the gist. We're good. I got it. Yeah, yeah there you go. So we're practicing gratitude. That's what we're doing. Yes, that's always that is that is, I think that is always really important too. That I think people sometimes forget about that part of thing. You know, part of it that when you are doing ritual and when you are, you know, even just pulling cards or going about your day, it's just practicing mm -hmm. gratitude. It's so important. And connection, just knowing you're not alone. Yeah. You are not, you're not alone and your potential of magic, creativity, and love will never be met in, a, in one lifetime. So just go for as much as you can go for. Right. Yeah. No, definitely. And, you know, I love too in your book how you did a ritual for each major arcana card. Like that yeah. is like, that's awesome. So were those Thank like, what, was any one of those a little bit like, got you stuck or did they all just kind of flow really well for you the part that was stuck was i so i i, I got into this thing about see i love i think the major arcana is the 5d yeah and the minor arcana is the 3d yeah definitely i can see that yeah yeah so how do we how do we access our spirits more is just really really what it all comes down to um, mm -hmm. and i felt it was like, Nancy, you haven't, these aren't really all the rituals you do. You can't just make it up on the spot. And do, 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 do. And so like, I was stuck at first chiding myself because I wasn't, it wasn't dogma. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like, this is what I do every in bulk. I just right. thought, no, I just have to give people an idea of what you could do with tarot, you know? So once I gave myself permission, then it flowed. Right. Although it was scary because I didn't know. I just, I just didn't know how it was going to land, you yeah. know? Right. I had a, I, I rode at a farm, this beautiful farm that's kind of like my monastery, really. And a friend came and she was in knee deep in trouble. Mm -hmm. And I was in the moment I was writing the ritual for the tower. Oh, wow. So I just finished it. And I said, hey, you know what? Read this for me and see if it helps you at all. She just bursted out crying. It was like it hit so many things for her that wow. she really needed. And I was just, I was, I was like, okay, this is going to work. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to work. Yeah. And I know you posted some pictures on Facebook too of that, um, of that farm. It looks so beautiful and peaceful there. Oh, it does. It, it, it looks so it, it, it's, it's like a monastery, really. It really, I mean, just, just looking at the picture too, it just like, it's just peace. Like that was the word that like, even before I read what you wrote, that's like the first thing I noticed. And I just thought that was like written. And then I read what you wrote and I'm like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah, no, this is, a, this, <laughs> this is a good spot. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and it, it's really great too, that how you really broke, broke each ritual down um, as well. So for those people that are just learning and really just to really connect, even if you are new, I love these, like just to kind of reconnect to it because we do, you know, after, you know, we get into our habits and we're reading and we're like, all right, whatever. And sometimes we don't go back to basics. And that's always such a good idea to do that every once in a while. You know, the, my, the one thing that happened that I, I'm going to try to change through my website, I, um, I have to talk to Llewellyn about, you know, audio rights and things. But mm -hmm. what I would really like to do is those visualizations. There's a ton of visualizations yes, in the oh, book. tons of them. And then after the book, after I handed in my draft, was the first time I learned of amphantasia. And that are oh. people that close their eyes don't see. And I just went, mm -hmm. oh, my God. You know, like, that's half my book. You know, like, now my book's not accessible to. And I talked to a woman who has, she literally calls herself mind blind. You know, like, when she closes her eyes, right. there's no images. None, yes, none. yes. I've talked to a couple of people. It's fascinating to me. Like, 
And Absolutely. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, it closed my eyes. There's all sorts of stuff going on. And, and it is. I know. And she, so she gave me some hints about what would help. Like now, when I ground with my clients and stuff, I'll just say, close your eyes or gaze at something softly. Okay. Right. You know, like I'm starting to learn how to. And so when I do the meditations on my website, which will be later, I'm going to add auditory, you know, like you hear the wind mm -hmm. in of the trees. Right. As you walk. Oh, yeah. Good idea. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like we have, as teachers, we have to come up with, we, and also the major arcana, I didn't want to, you know, one time I was teaching and I did the fool's journey and again, thought I hit that ball out of the park, you know, and someone came up and said, Nance, that was just so pronoun heavy. It just threw me out. I, I just, and I just went, oh my God, like, I'm never going to do that again, you know? So in the book. And that was hard. That was hard to put they instead of she for empress. It is, it is very, it is hard. And I, I, you know, even when I'm writing and stuff like that to do it and cause we're just so taught how to do it a certain way and you really have to work on it. I mean, oh, yeah, it's totally do. possible, but it, it does really, um, right. you know, it, it's hard. Like you read it over and it feels like it's not right, but it doesn't have, to, there's no right, you know? <laughs> And there's definitely a wrong. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there's definitely so he's definitely a wrong. I mean, we can't get off that easy. <laughs> definitely not. Let me see. We have another question. So, um, so Amber's talking about, which is something I did want to bring up as well. Um, you're a big Bowie fan. As oh am my I. god. Oh, I David. As am I. Look, Come I on, got him. David. I got him on my shoulders, Jared. <laughs> David David showed us how to die. I mean that, David Oh my gosh. You no know, I mean, and that his whole last album, I mean, it was so poetic. Like I it, to this day I still really can't listen to all of it. It's too much. No, me. I can't either. I can't but it's yet, too much. But yet he put it out there copyright free. Right? It was like he oh it's, it's, Yep. And I think also David was, uh, some of the things he said about creativity helped me so much. You now, like, so, like, I go to a studio, a dance studio every Sunday, and I just kind of, sometimes I lay there and just put the cards in a big circle on the floor around me and just see what's going to happen, you know. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for, like, five to six years, oh, right. and I've only had one breakthrough. Yeah. It, it was a good one, but it was, it was, it was, it was one. And I was telling a friend of mine, you know, it's like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I keep, I feel like I need to do this. And that's when he told me about David saying, you know, when you can barely feel the water and you feel like you might go drown, you know, that's when you know you're doing something important. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you're, you're in a place of, okay, I can barely get this. What is this? Right. You know, and that's I'm going to keep doing is. that, you know. Yeah, that's what, for me too, um, you know, I really tap into that, into his energy for any creative things that I'm doing, for sure. Oh. Definitely. Like, I even have my candle. See? Oh, wow. <laughs> God, honey. Woo. I'm going to find the coven of Bowie through all of this, I yes. think. Yes. Can we please? <laughs> totally. There is a Facebook that. page for, there's the Church of David Bowie, I think it's called, or some, David Bowie's right. Church. Oh, I'm yeah. going to look that up. We it's should start cool. our own, though. I think we should start our own. We, we <laughs> for sure. <laughs> he was in the tarot. Yeah, yeah. So. He did, definitely. Yeah, no, I know. And, you know, it's it's always awesome when I meet someone else who, who understands. <laughs> So I saw that you were into Bowie. I'm like, she understands. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it's yeah. wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. A wonderful thing. Um, let's see. So I'm, and you, I mean, you have actually in here too, all rituals for um, all of the Sabbaths too. So if yeah. you, if, you know, if you guys don't have her book yet, you could grab it today. And you will have a ritual ready to go next week. <laughs> For info. That's right. 
Yeah. And, and the reason I think I go that way is because I think that everything for me as a dancer and a choreographer, the, all the things, it all comes down to rhythm. Mm -hmm. And so the earth rhythm is the best and nothing captures that quite like the Sabbaths. Right. I mean, that, yeah, because that is exactly just that whole flow of all of it. And, you mm -hmm. know, it, it is. And, and tapping into that, too. It's for me, it's like you're just tapping into that flow and becoming a part of it. And it's so important. And I think. Like, like you and I feeling frustrated that January, we're at the end of January and everything already. But the ritual for in bulk, and I'm sure you'll do, too, it, mm -hmm. it's like you reset. It's yes. like, I, I let go of that. I'm going to be here now. Oh, we're going into spring. So let's just, you know, I had a, a beautiful dance teacher that said, you know, it's real easy to hit a pose, but the ones who make it interesting are the ones who can do transitions. Right. You know, and that's mm -hmm. what made me think of starting my emailer eight times a year. It's like, I'm just helping people with the transition of going into the next season. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and again, and that comes back to the whole ritual part of it is just adding kind of adding your spice to it, you know, yeah. and making oh, it totally. making it yours. It's so yeah. important. It's so important. And you know, and even and, and it is, you, you know, you explain all of the, you know, the, all of the Sabbaths, you explain what they are, and you have questions for them. And I love that too, for people who are just beginning, because a lot of times when you do look it up online, it's super, mm -hmm. it's overwhelming. And it's like so much information. So you don't know like what to pick out, what to do or any of those things. So this is yeah. like, it's, it's really handy because it, you kind Good. of, you give the alternate names for it. You give the themes of it. And, you know, even just what the wheel of the year is and, you know, how you could even use the majors going through that too. I mean, it, it definitely... It's, it's, and then all the different spreads in here, like you have so much information. Like, I feel like that it, this could just be like its own workshop for a whole year. Like you could use this all year and just like do a whole workshop, a deep dive. By the time you're done, you're going to be like a whole different person. You, that you're going to be like glowing. Bowie's going to be coming down on you. Bestowing all the gifts. <laughs> Thank you. That's oh, I'm wearing those weird clown suits like David, that one video. That's where my head goes. That's where I, that's where it goes. It just goes there. And then, you well, know, no wonder you're the glam magic. See, there you go. Yeah. Cause then, you know, and at the end we're all have a ritual where we dress as Ziggy Stardust and, and that'll be the end oh. of it. And then <laughs> you can't talk that. That'll be the, the end all of everything. And then everybody's supposed to be like, what next, Nancy? What next? That's, <laughs> you, know, you know what else I loved about David is that he didn't churn things out. Like he, I mean, there would be years between albums. Oh yeah. You know? And I love that. I just, I feel like we're in a, in a, a capitalistic treadmill. It's like next, next, what's your next thing? What's your next thing? Boop, 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 you know, and it's like, um, maybe not hustling. You know, like, like, could I just, yeah. Can I just be, and yeah. And can I, mean, I grow to where I need to go next? Right. Like, let me get there in my own time and not on the time yeah. of, you know, what social media or so-and-so, you know, say that I have to do it by, because again, that, mm -hmm. you know, you know, that just takes away from it. And that takes away that creativity. And I think, you know, yeah, and I know I've read a couple of things where he even was spoke about that because people would be like, well, why you didn't come out with anything. And he's just like, no, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Like that's, I'm not ready for that. Right. You know? And, right. and I think, you know, a lot of people are afraid, especially now to do that, you know, and to be oh, like, you oh, know what? Totally. And you know what? I don't, I'm not inspired right now. I'm not going to post for a couple days. Like, and some people are like, oh, you're not going to post? What's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen. It's going to be completely <laughs> fine. Like, but we just get ourselves so hyped up on that. And, you, you know, know I feel like people should never apologize. Like, if you, your emailer's late. Yeah. Or you're not posting every day or whatever. Don't ever apologize for that. Right. Just, yes, it's I like, agree. You know what? You don't owe anybody anything. Yes. Absolutely. No, yeah. So like, there's so many people make those posts. Like, I'm so sorry. I didn't post it. I didn't. Do I'm like, you know what? If you didn't say anything, I probably wouldn't have noticed. Not that exactly. your stuff isn't important, but I would have just got it when I got it. And that, that that's it. 
you know? Right, right, right. Yeah, and I, and I think, too, by even going through these rituals in your book, um, also kind of like you're taking back your time in a way, too. You know, you're like, because you're taking, making sure to take that self-care and your time to reflect and see how you, you know, feel about the cards, how you want to, and, you know, maybe you're going to be yeah. busy doing some rituals in here that you're not going to post every single day, or maybe something's going to have right. to be put off and that's okay. Yeah. So it's, so it's like giving that permission too, to be like, you know what? I didn't get to that because I was doing something for me and for my, you know, self-care right. and that's okay. And I, and I think you know, just even how you explain some of the things in here too, and the questions that you ask definitely lead to that, you know, like, how do you feel yeah. about it? How are, you know, how are you approaching this? So, do you know, I, with that, with that. that major arcana thing, that was, I had a one, I had like three people really, one person who the book would have actually been ideally for. So she knows just enough tarot to know her language, but she wants the self-development or she wants to grow on her own or she, you know, she may not want to read for someone else, but she really wants to get richer, you know, in that. Yeah. And I thought, okay, this book, this, you need, this would, I kept her in mind while I was writing the book, but she was also one of my helpers. Like she would write, I'd send a chapter and she'd go, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, those, those emails you guys are always fun. They're like, what are you saying here? And it's like, Shh, what it makes sense. It's fine. But I, I had another colleague, though, uh, and I'll mention them by name, Sam Lofgren, who, uh, man, they would kick my ass, man. They Like, hmm. the major arcana, I would give suggestions, the body wisdom parts. Hmm. I would always give suggestions. And they said to me, um, do you realize that everything you mentioned first takes money? Like go to the gym or get a massage. Right. Could you switch that? Could you switch from what could you do on your own? And also, I don't know, could you do it for maybe someone in a wheelchair? Like maybe they can't. And I have right. no, Jen, I have no idea I was an ableist. Right. right. I, I really didn't know that. And boy, that was like, a, I am so glad that happened. I'm That bitch slap still hurts. You know? <laughs> it's, like, it's still stinging, right? It's still stinging. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I have to shift this around. I am not going to exclude anyone. Right. You know, but boy, oh boy. Yeah. It, well, and wake I think, up, you know, in that, like, you know, like, it's, it's so important to be open to that. You know, oh. because people tend to be very, get very defensive. You know, they say they can handle the feedback, but then you give the feedback and they <laughs> handle the feedback and you're like, you're a liar. But, you know, just being open and that, you know, that alone, I mean, that's, that's growing and, and people right. sometimes don't want to admit that they maybe misstepped somewhere and they're like, no, no, I yeah. did that. Da, 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 da. But you know, and I think that's so awesome that you're like, Oh shit. Yeah, it's me. Okay. I'm going to change that. And it just makes it so much easier. And then again, as you're learning all of these things, as you're learning tarot, doing the rituals, you know, you need to be able to shift. I mean, it, oh, it's absolutely. all that flow. It's definitely all the flow. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And you know what? We're actually at an hour already. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh my God. You were delightful. I, I knew when I saw a picture of you, I thought, yeah, I gotta like talking to her. <laughs> and it's David. Yeah. And there's David there. That's it. So we're instant BFFs because David said so. That's it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So can you tell everybody where we could find you? Yes, my website is www.betweenworlds.us. And I just want to put a little plug in on February 5th. And I usually run a, the North Star Tarot Conference just for our sanity up here in Minnesota once a year. Yeah. But we're not going to gather this year. We're going to have a little cyber conference called uh, the uh, Human, uh, Join Our Human Being with the lovers and devils of the tarot because oh, this year right. is the year of lovers and devils yeah. and February 5th is just a cyber thing about making, you know, candle spells, sigils, uh, a Valentine's card, 
And it doesn't have to be for a beloved. The world could be the beloved. It's right. also creating magic. Lots of like 10 different presentations. So, oh, wow. Oh, that sounds awesome. I, you know, that's not on my website, but it's on the Twin Cities Tarot Collective okay. website. Okay. Yeah, we'll add it down in there. So if anyone wants to find it, we'll put it in the chat. There. Great. I'll just give you the link to the Eventbrite. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll post that for sure. Definitely. But right. thank you so very much. And I, oh, did, I really welcome. enjoyed your book. It, it really wonderful. Well, thank you. You're really, really great. And everybody, thanks for joining us. And I will post that event link um, when Nancy sends it to me. And be sure to visit her at betweentheworlds.us. Us. And if you do have her book, make sure you get on and, and review it. Tag her. Tag Luella. Thank you. Tag everybody. Yeah, I forget to ask for that. Yeah. That is helpful. Yes, it's so it's just so important. So, you know, reviews help authors very, very much. So it's just yeah. two seconds. And if you guys could do that, you could tag us, you could tag Llewellyn, tag Nancy, we'll repost it. Um, you know, and we love we love when when everybody helps out everybody else there. So yeah. you have Thank a you. fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so, so much. We'll have to have you on again. Thank you. I would love right. it. Yay. Bye. Bye. Bye.